What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Jim Leader Geo, and this is the locker room, week two of season five of the GBA, as I prepare for my upcoming match against the St. Louis Rampardos. This is Dan, aka A Drive, and you get one phone. I told you. I told you, phone. You get one chance. So I'm going to silence it now. Sorry for that, guys. We're going to go over the, the team prep that I have for the St. Louis Rampardos uh, in our matchup this week. Now, Dan um, has acquired some Pokemon during the free agency period between week one and uh, and now. And uh, what he ended up doing was dropping Kelbio, dropping Fortress, and um, dropping another Mon. I'm not really sure. I, I don't really remember. But what he ended up picking up was Smeargle, Blastoise, and Heracross. So I definitely had to make some changes uh, to my planning for this week based on that. The thing that's unfortunate about that, Keldeo, who's normally considered, you know, a triple AOU threat, is actually something that does not threaten my team that much. I have uh, Latias, who's an amazing uh, Keldeo counter. I can also run Vaporeon, who's very good against Keldeo. Uh, Keldeo is weak to the priority stab that Mega Pinsir holds. Keldeo wasn't a massive issue for my team, so getting rid of one of his, you know, top picks, uh, highest tier picks, was great for my team. So him dropping Keldeo, uh, you know, I'm like, you know what, against against a team like me and maybe against the rest of our division, that really that makes sense. The pickup of Heracross is incredible for him. I've run some calcs and that thing, if he runs Banded, and I really think he's going to run Banded, just wreck shop on my entire team. There is nothing on my team that doesn't risk a two-hit KO, even if it's max HP, max defense. Um, there's, you know, his stab can both of his stab can uh, two-hit KO Hippowdon, so I can't switch in with Hippowdon. I could slack off stall him, but uh, I can't switch in on it. Some Pokemon resist one, but then they're weak to the other. Entei, of course, resists Megahorn, but he's weak to his coverage of Stone Edge. And also, even if it's uh, even if it's not super effective, uh, Banded close combat will one-hit KO me. Uh, similar light to Latias, uh, a defensive Latias can survive the close combat, but unfortunately is one-hit KO'd by Megahorn. Blissey, Vaporeon, uh, they and the Moongus, again, all of them are going to get taken out. So I don't have safe switch into this thing, and it's going to be a problem if he opts to bring a choice banded Heracross. Things I could hope, maybe he thinks I'll bring Scarfed to outspeed some of the some of my offensive threats. Because the, the one beneficial thing is that my offensive threats do outspeed and one-hit KO him. So uh, Entei can switch in and, and kill him. Stuff like that. So that was all what was going through my head at, about this team planning. He's got a very solid defensive core that I think I can handle depending on a few things. So let's kind of go through my mentality for for what I'm thinking going into this match. So uh, I start off with every team building by running a few preliminary calcs. I used to do this much more thoroughly. I don't have quite as much free time to do that as I did in the past. So I did my best to try and run through some, some pertinent calcs. And the things that I suspect is that he's going to want to bring Sylveon, he's going to want to bring Mega Aggron, and uh, looking at his team changes, I think he's going to bring Heracross, I think it's going to be Banded, I think he's probably going to bring... This is where it gets a little more confusing. I'm very confident with those three. Uh, I think it's possible that he'll bring his Salamence because I think he really does like the Fairy Dragon Steel Core. But again, it, it starts getting, it gets hard to kind of predict what's going to happen there. I, actually, you know what, I don't know that he will bring Salamence because he doesn't do good against my team. But that, these sort of things were what's going through my head. I need to be able to break down his core. I need to be prepared for his core to be offensive because Sylveon is a great example of a Mon that he could bring defensively. Uh, but that would be very, very risky to not prepare for offensively. So for that reason, I'm opting to bring Blissey this week. So um, 
you might notice on the bottom of the screen here on the bottom left, I have more than more than six Pokemon listed here because that was the thought process going through my team building. I didn't have my my perfect six as you would right away. But one thing I know is I need Blissey. I need it to to shore up against any of his specially offensive mons. Um, of which some of the biggest concerns would be Sylveon. Uh, Blastoise has the potential to go offensive in that way also, and I think there's a good there's a good likelihood that Blastoise will have some form of physical offense. I really do. Um, in addition to those two, we can also see Uxi being especially offensive. It doesn't have to be, and it's not that strong anyway, but it could be. It will wall Quagsire. It, it's a special Victini. Uh, I have that also, and Jolteon can absolutely not touch it one way or another. So it's nice. It's a nice surefire way for me to answer all of his special threats. The thing about it, and this is why I have two Blissies here. If it opts to run Calm Mind, I need to be able to break those substitutes. So I have to have Seismic Toss on it. I ran through a couple of iterations of this team. As you can see, between the two Blissies here... One of them is Seismic Toss, Soft World, Thunder Wave, Heal Bell. The reason for opting to run this set would be if I wanted to stay in and wall setup sweepers. That said, at the time I was considering bringing Ditto, who is the definition of anti setup sweep. If you want to prevent yourself from getting set up on and swept, you bring Ditto, because they can set up. Till the cows come home and then ditto can come in take all of those boosts with a choice scarf and completely outspeed them so that's that's why i have ditto there just in case of that but then i started going through this night and thinking eggington is actually a very hit and run pokemon for me eggington's job is to come in soak up a hit and take so little damage that i don't need to worry about healing myself up then i pop off whatever move I need to do and get out of there because every time Eggington comes in it's going to really encourage Heracross to come in so for that reason I don't need soft boiled I don't think it's going to do much for me Thunder Wave would be if I wanted to say predict uh, the Heracross on the switch or something and T-Wave it but because the Heracross gets guts it's actually very risky it would allow me to outspeed it with some of my other Pokemon but it it's just not worth the what it does to his power it'll convert especially with a choice Ben it'll convert a lot of his attacks into one hit KOs on some of my mom uh Chopperberry allows me to survive one um close combat but again it, it wouldn't it doesn't serve the purpose on this set because uh, I had counter I got rid of counter I don't know it's I, I don't I didn't end up liking this one in the end I, I put some more thought into it and I, I'm going to be bringing this Blissey it's a Wish Protect Heal Bell Seismic Toss. It is a very generic Blissey. Bold Max Defense. It was... And it was gen by Mr. Murkros. Thank you. I, I needed it kind of in a rush. The reason I want to bring this Blissey is, the, like I said before, it's going to invite in the Heracross. So I just want to get off that Wish and get out of there. Um, I can survive one Mega Horn on this Blissey. So uh, I could run some weird situations where I could wish protect or something like that. And the seismic toss is so that um, I can break the subs of, of any of them on that want to set up a potential sub on me. Uh, with the exception of uh, a Victini, I would be able to break the base 100 sub. So that's okay. Uh, that's what Blissey's there for. My be-all end-all answer to uh, those type of Pokemon. Next, we're going to look into some of the other easy brings. Decisions was an easy bring for me, and uh, the set I brought is for a very specific reason. Uh, I have Sacred Fire Extreme Speed, as, as you do with Adamant, because you have to be Adamant if you're running those things. I brought Stone Edge uh, for coverage on um, potentially a Salamence switch in, and then I have Hidden Power Grass. Um, because no, Hidden Power Grass is a two-hit KO on Quagsire, even with Adamant and no special offense, but special attack investment. 
So that's why I'm bringing the decisions that I'm going to bring this time. Choice Scarf is to outspeed any of his potential Choice Scarfers or speed tie them. The Victini, if he is Choice Scarf, cannot one-shot Entei. And then that gives me the option to hit him back with a Stone Edge. Obviously, I can't one-shot him either, but this will give me a lot of very good knowledge if I find out that he outspeeds me with my Choice Scarf, running, barring that we run a speed tie, or if he's running Jolly. All of this will be very good information for me to have. It prevents me from getting surprise KO'd by uh, any of the rock coverage that a lot of his offensive mon can carry. It uh, ensures that if he's running a Scarfed Heracross, he doesn't pick up a, a KO on Entei. The big thing about this match is, eventually, if he is a banded Heracross, he's going to be putting so much pressure, I'm going to have to start sacrificing walls. I cannot sacrifice my offensive core. I need them to take out threats, so I can't let uh, my expectation of his Heracross set cause Decision to die. So I have to be Scarfed. I don't need the extra power. Um, any Pokemon that I expect to one-hit KO with Entei that are important one-hit KOs, I can still get with the Choice Scarf. And if I'm not going to get those one-hit KOs, popping a Choice Scarf on it doesn't really change the nature of how I'm going to play the Entei against his team. So that's the point of Entei. Uh, I can still get a potential two-hit KO depending on his set on Mega Aggron, risking the burn on him. I don't think Aggron's a great switch into Entei. Uh, he does have a lot of potential water types, um, a lot, he has two, he has Blastoise and Quag, so I don't think he's going to bring Quag, being perfectly honest, it doesn't really match up well against my offensive threat, so it's not really going to wall them very well. Blastoise could be, and Hidden Power could be useful for that, really it's a filler move here, there's not a lot of things I could put in this spot, uh, but it would help me uh, to come in on a weekend a weekend Blastoise and take it out with the with the hidden power barring that he's not an assault vest set. So that's decisions. Next, we are looking into bringing uh, Latias. Now, Latias, I really like my Latias set for this week, guys. It is a bold max HP, max defense Latias that cannot be two hit KO'd by Victini. Um, specifically, choice banded V Create Victini. He can, I can switch in on the V Create, eat that up, and then outspeed the next turn and pop off a recover. If he's choice Scarf, he's not strong enough to two hit KO me, even if he outspeeds me after the speed drop and then that would allow me to recover on the next turn he's then so uh so much slower with two defense drops and two speed drops i could probably ko him with a jacob media that would force him out and maybe bring in i could predict a sylveon or something like that so this is my big teeny answer uh the super effective moves he could potentially carry to to answer this would be shadow ball um and he learns Glaciate or any of the hidden powers that can hit me super effective. But outside of that, there really isn't much. He would have to be very ballsy to have to predict the red one with a Shadow Ball. And even if he does, he would have to be specially offensive for its two-hit KO me. And even if that were the case, he would have to be choice, and I could then just switch right into Blissey. So the combination of Blissey and Latias means that I completely shut down uh, the Victini, barring a very unique set, and even then I'm not too worried about it, to be honest. J just in general, Victini is not a massive, massive threat to my team unless it comes in at a very inopportune time. Uh, so next we have Hippowdon. Hippowdon being my best answer to Heracross. Obviously, I'm very scared of this Heracross. You can hear my voice and everything I'm saying about my team prep here. Nato Nato is Impish, full HP, full defense investment, and I am still two hit KO'd by a uh, by the stab of Max Adamant, Max Attack Heracross. But there's no, that's not a guarantee he's going to bring that set. So Hippowdon is still a good bring, even if it's just, I mean, if it's going to get two hit KO by it, then it's essentially death fodder, but that's okay, because I would need death fodder anyway, if that's the case, because I do not have a safe switch in. Something is going to die. The best bet I have to answer that Pokemon is Nato Nato. Nato Nato can take, uh, is not two hit KO'd by any of the other varieties of his mon. He is my strongest physically defensive and to him. Uh, Rhydon is another potential answer. The reason I'm not bringing Rhydon is that Rhydon cannot one-hit KO Heracross back, and um, he doesn't have the reliable recovery, so I have to do that in this sense. Uh, finally, my last two Pokemon, I have Cuddles here, my Mega, my Mega Pinsir, running 
I'm going to need to change the Mega Pincer set. I have Return, Quick Attack, Swords Dance, Substitute. Um, I think I'm going to change out that Substitute for Earthquake. The main reason there being that uh, he does have safe switch ins to Mega Pincer, namely the Mega Aggron. If the Mega Aggron is a tank set, uh, I'm assuming it's going to be max HP. There's no reason for it to not be. Uh, the next 252 could either be in defense, special defense, or attack. I uh, could kind of go into any of those. It really depends on what he's what he's fearing. If he's fearing an offensive Latias, he's going to pop that into his uh, special defense so that I can't two hit KO it. If he's fearing the Entei, it's going to go into defense. However, I really don't think that he's a Mega Aggron's a good switch into Entei, even as a defensive set. More likely, I think that he'll be going offensive with it, but we'll we'll really have to see. Regardless, Earthquake can um, can hit him hard, do a pretty good number on him. Originally, when I thought about substitute, I thought I could come in on a, a specific threats, set up a substitute, allowing me a, a free Swords Dance or. Maybe I envision some potential scenarios where, for example, uh, Cuddles comes in and I set up a Swords Dance as he brings in Agron. He might double on the turn that I would go for a substitute to scout either if he's going to go for an attack on me. Maybe he'd predict the switch, go for an Earthquake. I'm flying and it wouldn't avoid me. Now I'm plus two behind the substitute. I get another Swords Dance off and I can pop off a, a plus four Earthquake on him and take him out potentially based on prior damage. That's my thought process behind the pincer there. Uh, that's why I have the set that I was bringing. I don't need any other coverage move because Return will either Oko or very narrowly Oko any of the other Pokemon. Earthquake also hits the Jolteon super effective in case he opts to bring it, but Jolteon will outspeed me, so again I would need that substitute or to hit it on the switch anyway if it's predicting me, but I don't think it's a good switch in on a Return anyway, so it doesn't really matter there. My last Pokemon is the Vaporeon Zoolander. Uh, I went through a couple of iterations of this guy's set and I ended up with this one. Uh, Scald Baton Pass Wish Protect. Uh, I know I, you know, I, I was consider might still be considering Heal Bell on this, but I think I'm just going to run it this way. Scald, of course, is a great, it, great stab for Zoolander. I know that it would activate Guts on Heracross if he switches in on it and takes the burn, but even though that will up the power, it will drastically aid in my ability to actually take him out because hitting that a little bit of prior damage on him uh, means that I can run a couple of protect stalls with a couple of my mon and potentially not even lose much more than one Pokemon to it in the course of the game after switching on Stealth Rocks and, and, and the like. As you can see, Nado Nado, I, I forgot to kind of go over this. He has a very, very similar set anyway also. Uh, Whirlwind, Stealth Rock, Slack Off, Earthquake. Not not too creative, but I didn't really need to be. Um, and then, so yeah, so the Zoolander running that baton pass here is to help me gain a little bit of momentum. The Wish Protect, of course, for my potential reliable recovery and to facilitate additional healing on Cuddles and Entei should they need it. So that's my team for this week, guys. Again, I kind of talked about Ditto. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish up by talking about Ditto. His team, as far as setup is concerned, aren't my biggest fears. If Heracross is a Swords Dance set, then that is also potentially problematic in theory, except that Entei can come in and scare it out every single time, and then figuring out that it's a Swords Dance set after just sacking just one Pokemon to gain that knowledge, I then forevermore know that without that Swords Dance, he fails to hit two hit KOs on a lot of Pokemon, allowing me a lot more safer switches. So um, if he did opt to run a set like that, I just I, I didn't see anything else on his team that truly threatened me on the on the setup side. If Salamence is a Dragon Dance sweeper, he has a very difficult time getting past Nado Nado also, who can whirlwind him out. Um, I again with being a, uh, a choice Scarf Entei, I could get a burn potentially with Sacred Fire, I could Stone Edge, Outspeed and Stone Edge, uh, and, you know, Zoolander being a bold defensive set also can take him really well, so I'm not super scared of the Salamence, I don't think he'll bring it, if he does, I think it's going to be a defensive set. 
So for that reason, I'm not. I didn't feel the need to bring Remix this week. Originally, I did anticipate that might be something useful for me to bring, but in the end, I decided against it. Anyway, so that's gonna be your uh, week two San Francisco Giantes. I'm gonna put these guys in the battle box, and I'm gonna go talk to Dan, and we're gonna get this battle underway in a little while. As always, my name is Jim Luda Geo. You guys, are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.